So is this gonna be a week of trick or treat? So hey y'all, welcome to some Food for Thought. Today is just gonna be a little bit of a general update on stuff that's going on in my life and in the world. And because I'm filming it on Halloween, I'm wearing this orange shirt and theming this video somewhat around Halloween. First of all, I'm really honored that I am being recognized with an award. Next week it is the Jefferson Award for Public Service. I'm being given that award by Pace University where I'm on the faculty. The award is basically in recognition for volunteer service. A lot of you may know that last year I did an entire year of volunteer service in Detroit. I sit on the board of a number of not-for-profit organizations and an organization that I run provides volunteer opportunities to students at Pace University. So yeah, I thought that was kind of sweet. That goes down as a treat. Of course, I'll let you know for certain after the award ceremony. Another treat. So last week, I got a response to one of my videos from Bruce Webb. Now, you guys may know Bruce as a regular contributor to the comment section on my YouTube channel, often leaving links in the comment section. Look out for Bruce Webb in the comment section. Read the comments follow their links. Bruce Webb was responsible for a few videos that I watched of Richard D. Wolf. I made some follow-up videos on Richard D. Wolf. Turns out that a friend of mine, Emma Yura, who I've worked with in the world of worker co-ops, was interviewed by Richard Wolf two weeks ago on their show, Economic Update. Well, I sat down and had lunch with Emma last week, and it looks like Emma is going to be doing an interview on this channel and maybe joining us for one of the live streams. As far as me in the world of co-ops, I'm in the very early stages of planning a gathering in Detroit. I hope to be at least equal in size to the 22nd Pedagogy and Theater of the Oppressed conference that I organized in the summer of 2017. Did y'all catch season two of Stranger Things? So I don't know if folks are fans of sci-fi horror. You know that I am. You know that I am. So I binge watched with my husband season two of Stranger Things this last weekend. It was great. It had a little bit of a rocky start for me. Not so much that I was questioning what was happening, but I was so thrilled by season one that I really did not want to be disappointed by season two. Just everything about that show I love. It really captures the feel of 1980s sci-fi horror. The soundtrack seems to have just been ripped from a 1980s B sci-fi horror film. So if you don't have plans for Halloween, do if you have access to Netflix, sit down and just binge watch Stranger Things too. So that's it for the treat portion of this video. Now on to the tricks. So the first indictments have come out of the Mueller investigation of collusion with, or alleged collusion with Russia in the 2016 Donald Trump election. So far, Paul Manafort and his protege Rick Gates have been named in the indictment. They apparently turned themselves in yesterday, but a name that we haven't heard recently, George Papanopoulos, who was a volunteer in the Trump campaign, who apparently lied to the FBI investigators and then later confessed to lying to the FBI investigators about the role that he played in trying to connect Russia and the Trump campaign. It turns out that in March of 2016, George Papanopoulos was at a meeting with foreign advisors as part of the Trump campaign. It seems as early as April of 2016, George Papanopoulos was talking to people on the Trump campaign about emails that had been stolen from the Clinton campaign, emails that could have been used against Hillary Clinton, destroying her chances at becoming president of the United States. If it's true that information about those emails was coming out as early as April, that means that in June, when folks like Paul Manafort and Donald Trump Jr. were sitting down to speak to that Russian agent about the damning evidence against Clinton, it's pretty difficult 
to believe if what George Papanopoulos says is true that Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort wouldn't have known what that meeting was going to be about with that Russian agent. It also would mean that Jeff Sessions was lying under oath because he would have been at that meeting with George Papanopoulos and Trump and all of those foreign advisors. We're being given the impression that whatever went on with the Trump campaign and Russia was not a big deal. If what George Papanopoulos says is true, the Trump campaign was engaged in illegal activity. The behavior they were engaged in is covered in the Foreign Agents Registration Act, which requires disclosing any political connection to foreign nationals, not only to the government, but to the people of the United States, as is Jeff Sessions lying under oath. Illegal activity. Y'all, this is the Attorney General of the United States lying under oath. Do you remember Bill Clinton lying about his relationship with Monica Lewinsky? He got impeached. What's happening here is pretty much equivalent to what was happening in the Watergate scandal. It was just some people breaking into an office to get access to information that they weren't supposed to have, which I guess is about the same as hacking someone's server and getting access to their email that you're not supposed to have. Do you remember what what happened to Nixon? So before we laugh all of this off as just some goofy political shenanigans, we should keep in mind that these are things that are supposed to have consequences and in the past have had consequences. These consequences are what are supposed to help us maintain those checks and balances in our political system. I don't know, what do you think? So that's it for this video. Like it if you like it, share, Comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto. Big guns and big guys. I love myself. But they can do what they want.